Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. First of all, thank you so much for 1000 subscribers. We are finally monetized. So today in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to dual boot Windows and Linux. So first of all, you're going to open your disk management on Windows and wait for that to load. What you're going to want to do is if you only have one hard drive or one SSD, you're going to want to shrink your Windows partition. You can see here's our Windows partition and I already shrunk it by like 255 gigabytes. So you can shrink it as much as you want your uh, Linux file to be. So if you want more information on how to do this or if you run into any issues, there will be a video in the description showing you how to resolve any issues with shrinking if it shows like zero megabytes available to shrink. So let's get started. After shrinking your drive, you're gonna wanna download your uh, your Linux ISO. In this video, I'm going to be using Linux Mint since uh, it's the most available and common Linux distro. So you can see there are multiple editions. Just choose whichever one you uh, you prefer or you can of course just download other uh, other Linux stuff. So like Ubuntu or uh, whatever else. So we're going to download these two text files. You're going to right click and save as and just click save and make sure not to change anything in their names or open them. And then you're going to click on verify and you're going to want to download the actual ISO. So just download from uh, down here and select whatever country you're from to have the fastest download speed. Then in the verify page, you can see we already downloaded these text files. So you're going to follow these instructions and you can see here it says for Windows users, you're going to click here, you're going to then click on this link and download the application GNUPG to uh, help us verify. So you're going to click here download next to Windows, the simple installer. You can just read these instructions and follow them by yourself or just follow the steps in the video. You're going to go to your downloads and run the installer. There we go, run as admin, click OK, and just click next until it's downloaded. There we go. Then you're going to go to the file where everything is stored. You're going to right click and then click open PowerShell window here or command line window here. If it opens the PowerShell, you're just going to enter CMD to a uh, enable CMD commands in the PowerShell. So going back to the website, you're going to copy and paste the commands they tell you to. So right here, just copy this and paste it into your command line. And then you're going to want to go to your ISO Linux file, rename it and just copy the name and replace here file name dot ISO with the actual file name. There we go. You're going to enter and this is going to take a while, like uh, 20 seconds. And you're going to see it's going to give us a hash file. So now with this hash file, you're going to go back to your files and open the actual text file that we downloaded previously. So you can see this one right here. So we're going to go into files and just double click on the text file. You can see since we downloaded cinnamon, which is uh, the most feature rich one and it's closest to windows, like the default windows experience, you can see there is this uh, hash file, which we are going to uh, compare with the one that was generated in the command line. You can see it does match. So that is fine. Now for the authenticity check, we're going to follow these steps. We're just going to copy and paste into the command line. Then just continue the steps. It's very easy. Well, at least for Linux Mint. I don't know about any other distros. The process will be different. So depending on uh, what error messages you get, you just paste different commands. 
and then you can see here we get this fingerprint and there's this image here we want to make sure the fingerprint is the same you can see it is the same so that's great we can close out of this verification thing or you can continue I don't know but that's enough to make sure that your uh, ISO file is correct now then with everything downloaded and verified you want to go to the installation guide right here we're gonna create the bootable disk you can see here for Windows Mac or other Linux distributions you're gonna download Balena Etcher and you can see here the download links aren't showing up that's because of my ad block so if you have that issue just disable your ad block for this page you can see here we can finally download Balena Etcher for the Windows so just download that and once it's downloaded you are going to run it then once it's open you're gonna select your ISO right here open it and then you're gonna plug in your USB stick you're gonna need a minimum of 4 GB USB I recommend 8 or more gigs and then you're gonna flash so just click flash and this is gonna take a while maybe 15 minutes but once it's done, you're gonna get this message, flash completed. You can close out of Belena Etcher. And if we open our files, you can see the USB drive is already unmounted. However, if it's not unmounted for any reason, you're just gonna right click on it and then click uh, unmount or eject. Then you can finally unplug, no, actually leave the USB plugged in and we're gonna reboot into BIOS. So you can either do that by creating this shortcut. So you just right click on your desktop, click, click uh, new and shortcut. And then you're gonna paste the text in the description right here into it. And by running the shortcut as admin, you're gonna be able to uh, restart to BIOS without uh, any like F uh, and key combination. If you don't wanna do this, you can just restart your computer or laptop or uh, shut down and turn it back on and then click escape F2 or F10 depending on your model. So you can see we are in the BIOS and going to boot options, you wanna change the USB to the highest. So you can see to change values for me, it's F6. So you're gonna hover over the USB and just click F6 till it's at the top. Then to save and exit, it's F10. Well, at least for my BIOS, it should be the same and then just click enter to exit saving changes. Then you're gonna get this screen and you're just gonna click enter for the first option to load Linux Mint installer. Then we are finally in the installer. You can see here, there's a bunch of stuff. So we're just gonna open disk to see if um, everything's still there. So our Windows partition, and uh, the empty partition that we're gonna install Linux on. So right here, our two terabyte hard drive, and you can see everything is still here. Now, at the top left, you're gonna double click on install Linux Mint. Once that's open, you're gonna have these installation steps. It's basically like Windows, super simple. Just follow the steps on the screen. You can select your language, keyboard layout you can test your keyboard there then I recommend you connect to Wi-Fi to actually get the whatever these are the, the video and audio drivers the multimedia codecs so and to download them you're also gonna need to enable secure boot which is gonna tell you to put a password once that's done, you're going to get this installation type. So you can either select the first one, which I'm going to do, or the last one, which lets you manually select what partition to download to. So if you're installing any other distro, it doesn't have the automatically download alongside Windows option. You're going to have to manually select the partition, which is empty that we created before uh, 
opening the USB Live boot. Now then, you can see we have seven partitions right now and it says it's going to download Linux to the eighth partition. So it's not going to delete anything that we have on our other partitions. You're going to follow the steps, enter your information, and then boom, the installation is done. You're just going to restart your computer, laptop. Then you're going to get this message, remove installation media. So just unplug the USB, click enter, and you're going to get this screen. Just hit enter, continue boot. Or if you don't get that screen, it's fine as well. And then you have this selector. If you select the first option, you enter Linux. If you, second, uh, if you select Windows Boot Manager, you enter Windows. So there we go. We are now in Linux. You can see already set up everything. We have OBS running. So what you want to do is go into Driver Manager. Make sure you have drivers if you need any. You can go to Software Manager to download any apps you need. I downloaded OBS from there. Then this shield at the bottom right, you want to make sure everything is up to date. And there is a starter guide that shows up when you first load the Linux Mint, which is going to show you everything that you need to get started. You can see our, I also downloaded OSU and you can install Steam and uh, there's a lot of uh, other apps that are pre-installed that are very useful. Basically just like the Windows default apps like Notepad and pictures and whatever else you might need. So you can see there's a bunch of stuff and you're also going to want to set up your firewall. So you're just going to open this and for administrative uh, running apps you're also going to need to enter your password which is uh, a bit different from Windows. Instead of entering your pin you need to enter your password. So you're going to set up your firewall just follow the steps and you're gonna be all set. That's basically it. You can discover a bunch of things. There's like live TV channels and other stuff. And if you open disk, you can see this is our partition that we made and our Windows partition. So everything is still there. Now that to go back to Windows, you're gonna want to restart or shut down and then open your laptop back again. Then you're going to go back to the screen and just go to Windows Boot Manager. Normally, you should only have one Windows Boot Manager. I have to because uh, I did dual boot other stuff previously and kind of failed or something. So yeah, we are back in Windows and that's it. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if this was helpful. If you have any issues with switching from one OS to the other, I have another video in the description which uh, lets you create a, uh, a manager to switch between each operating system. So check that out. It's uh, super cool. It has like a nice graphical interface. And yeah, that's basically it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.